Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. How are you tonight? I hope everybody is uh, going to be able to stay on this call for the whole hour. Um, again, if you do have a question, please press zero, zero on the keypad on your phone. We really appreciate you being on the call in the first place. So, again, good evening and welcome to our first ever telephone town hall meeting in the city of Allendale Beach. Tonight, we welcome your questions, and it's for City Manager Roger Carlton. You can ask him anything you want. Um, if you want to do that, you need to press zero, zero on the keypad on your phone. And what happens is uh, somebody will get your question queued up and we'll bring you on live to ask the question. Or we can read it over the air if you're more comfortable that way. Um, uh, let's see, we're going to be talking about um, all sorts of different things. And so if you do have a question, again, press zero. Um, th these these calls I, I get to be party of, of a lot. And uh, so you just go and you ask your question. And, um, we get it answered right away. It's not a back and forth situation. It's just you ask a question, boom, you're done. And uh, we'll get it answered one way or the other. So again, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Press zero, zero on the keypad on your phone if you want to ask us a question. Press seven, seven on the keypad on your phone if you want to provide us your email address so we can send you email updates from the city. Uh, we have somebody standing by to collect your email address. So again, it's zero for questions and seven for email addresses. Um, when you do get to one of the screeners, if you are pressing zero, you get your neighborhood, your name would be uh, greatly appreciated, obviously your question as well. One last time, welcome to our Telephone Town Hall meeting. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Again, if you do have a question, please press zero, zero on the keypad on your phone. Press seven on the keypad on your phone if you want to provide us your email address so we can provide you email updates. And we see some people are taking us up on this, and that's just great news. So City Manager Roger Carlton, go ahead and take the call away if you would, please. Well, thank you, Kurt, and good evening. Uh, I know that many people who are listening are very passionate about our great city. This is where we live, where we work, and where we play. We have everything here, and it's a great city. But lately it will appear that some members of our local media have ignored all the good and positive things that are happening in Hallandale Beach. As your city manager, I'm responsible for more than 600 employees, who are your public servants, who make sure that essential services of this city are available to all of our residents and visitors. Tonight I am here to take your questions, clear up any inaccurate information that may have caused you to form a negative opinion of your city. There are lots of great things happening and I'm here to answer your questions, to give you feedback uh, and to hear your feedback about our departments and to make sure that our department heads can immediately tackle any of the issues that you choose to bring to my attention on tonight's call. Tonight's telephone town hall meeting is unprecedented. There is no way to fit more than 300 people who are uh, in our commission chambers. But tonight we expect to have more than 5,000 of you joining in our telephone town hall. At the end of the call, you would be given the opportunity to leave a voicemail message for me. Rest assured that my team will get back to you. We also will be posting the audio of this call in its entirety to the city's social media and our website. Please share that post with your friends and neighbors if they did not have an opportunity to participate. Tonight we'll be dealing in facts and not conjecture. This is good news to share and we want to reach as many of our residents as possible because despite what you read in the local media, we have a lot to be proud of at Hallandale Beach. With that in mind, let's turn to the first call. Well, you bet. And we have some people queuing up right now. Again, for the people that just joined us, if you do have a question, please press zero, zero on the keypad on your phone. If you want to provide us your email address for email updates, please press seven. Luciana, you are up. Welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. I hope I pronounced your name right. Go ahead with your question, please. Yes, hi, good evening, everybody. Um, my question, I have actually two questions. One is residential, the other one is commercial. I do have property on both places and I do have, have questions for both. Um, the first one, it would be the residential. I wanted to find out how uh, is the NIP program coming along, the neighborhood improvement program, and what, what are the um, the benefits uh, for for that um, for that plan. All right, well, thanks for that question. It's really a good one. Uh, 
First Avenue, uh, for those who may not know all of the geography, is the road uh, that parallels the railroad tracks uh, from, uh, let's say, Hallandale Beach north to Fifth. That's the area of Fashion Row. Over the years, it has been a, a very successful area, and then it kind of fell down on its luck, and it's starting to come back right now. But our plans are to enhance this image of being a place to go by fashion, to be able to walk comfortably, to go to uh, some great restaurants, maybe even someday to have some housing all tied into it. And we're in the process of developing a plan. Uh, it will be brought to the city commission for their review. We'll be involving the building owners and the tenants. So there's some exciting things that are gonna be happening to bring back Fashion Row. Excellent. Thank you so much. Do we have an estimated time about like when the, this, this plan is going to be uh, in place? Well, we're actually bringing uh, some recommendations to the city commission uh, who sit as the community redevelopment agency in this case uh, in about two weeks. Uh, so this is really going to boil up soon. And Assuming that they're okay with it, you know, they make the policy, they decide what our direction will be, but assuming they're okay, I think you'll see some uh, meetings held, some uh, strategies further developed, and start to see some improvements uh, uh, in certainly less than six months. That's our goal. Uh, we don't sit on our hands. We bring recommendations. We listen to the citizens. We get direction, and away we go. So... Uh, thanks for calling in. This is a very important item. Let's move on to Donnell Brown. Oh, hold on, hold on one second. Uh, let me bring Don, Darnell up. Welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Go ahead if you would, please, Donnell. Yes, hi, uh, uh, City Manager. Uh, this is Donnell Brown. Listen, uh, I was thinking I was talking about. Uh, I have just two questions with you. Uh, I see the. Uh, uh, the um, the construction that you're doing down Foster Road, but I'm trying to wonder if any kind of um, business is going to bring some economic change uh, to the to the community of the Northwest section, and also uh, the plaza that you put up over here on uh, Foster Road across from Foster Park Plaza. Uh, if we going to have any community relationship for us, like uh, uh, City of Hollywood does every week, they have. Um, a venue going on every every day of the week over in City Hollywood, but we have anything going on in the Northwest section. Uh, I think it'll be something that we can come, we can look at uh, to do something every Friday to uh, bring the crime down when people will have something to do uh, consistently. Um, looking forward to like like once a week um, of the um, of the month where we'll be able to come together as a community because right now we have anything to do positive. In the northwest section, besides uh, go to Obie Johnson Park, or uh, either to the gym. I, uh, Donnell, I think I I hear what you're saying. And for those again who are listening who might not understand the uh, the geography, uh, uh, Foster Road is in the northwest section. That has traditionally been a neighborhood that needed a lot of public investment, higher unemployment rate, and and a bunch of other issues, including crime. Uh, as city manager, I am completely cognizant of that. Uh, I can tell you that we have a new police chief, Sonia Quinones, and she has been focusing on reducing crime all over the town, including the northwest section, and the latest statistics on crime are way down. On the economic development question, uh, Foster Road is a, a street that kind of goes off at an angle, uh, through that part of town. Uh, there is a lot of vacant prop property there, and there's a number of housing units that are currently being built with more to follow. Uh, the Foster uh, Square Park that you mentioned was just finished uh, about two months ago, and it is a beautiful little park uh, uh, that uh, is quite nice, and it was built uh, by a local contractor as well, uh, uh, and a student who graduated from our high school was very much involved in the design effort. So this is a park that uh, was done by the folks who lived there. Very exciting. Now, 
the activities that you were talking about uh, to have more events is a key thing. You have to get people comfortable with coming out of their homes, with visiting there, with uh, uh, if we can get some more stores. Uh, and there's a big project that I'm actually negotiating uh, tomorrow at Foster and Dixie. Uh, Dixie Highway is on the west side of the railroad tracks. It's been vacant land for a long, long time, and uh, now it's going to go productive with housing units and retail stores. So we are committed to this part of town, uh, as we are to the whole town. There's a lot of things happening, uh, and uh, I'll close on this question with the uh, recent celebration of Martin Luther King Day. And... Uh, this is an event that went off without a hitch. It was secure. Uh, people were using a park there. Uh, thousands of people came out to uh, uh, commemorate, uh, I think, a hero to everybody, Martin Luther King. And we want to keep this momentum and this energy going. So thanks for the call. It's an important part of town, and it's part of our focus. Thank you, sir. Uh, we want to do our first survey question, if we can. You get to press 1, 2, 3, or 4 to vote on the keypad on your phone. Here goes. Uh, the city has various ways to communicate official information with its residents. Which one is the most important to you? If it's email sign up, press 1. Social media, press 2. The website, press 3. Or the newsletter mailed to your, via, to your home, press 4. Again, what's the best way to communicate with you? Which one do you like the best? Email, press 1. Social media, press 2. Website 3 or the newsletter that's mailed to your home, press 4. We really appreciate your voting. This is very important. Okay, let's take Mark while you're voting. Mark, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Mark, please go ahead with your question. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Roger and uh, all those out in the audience. Um, mine was related to uh, traffic and particularly on South Ocean Drive. Uh, while I think the length of our property uh, that is the city's property of Ocean Drive runs probably about a mile uh, from Hallandale Beach down to the uh, gate there of uh, uh, Golden Beach. Uh, the traffic uh, is enormously fast, uh, literally 24-7. Uh, just a great deal of high-speed traffic, and I know this probably be of uh, Sonia uh, the chief of police, uh, as, as, we, as you just described, would be an interest. Uh, as they get down into Golden Beach going south, they immediately descend down to 35 because they run radar. They have a discipline, which has gone on for years. But, you know, as I count up the crosswalks, Roger, I may be off by one or two, and I apologize, but there are 10, approximately 10 pedestrian crosswalks that take to the ocean, um, and there's enormous amount of foot traffic, and there has been some substantial accidents along the way. But the so, speed so is, is your is accident. your point that you you're worried about the speeders there and all the people that are walking back and forth? Is that your point? Because I can yes. answer that. All right, yeah, well, that's the point. All right, well, let me let me tell you, I'm simpatico to what you're saying. I won't say what building I live in, but I live on uh, Ocean uh, Drive. So I drive to work every morning there, and I drive home every afternoon. I can tell you that in the afternoon, the traffic doesn't go fast. It goes really slow. But during the day and on weekends, you're right, there's a good bit of speeding that goes on. There are only four access points to the beach, and they do have ways that people can walk across. But I have listened to what you've said. We're keeping a list of action items, and I promise you that I will uh, discuss this with our chief of police uh, tomorrow and that we will uh, put out some patrols there and write some uh, citations for these speeders. So thanks for bringing that point to me, uh, uh, and it's an important one, and we're going to do something about it. So we did a, our first survey question, it went like this. The city has various ways to communicate official information with its residents. Which way do you like the best? Email was 48% uh, was the newsletter mailed to your home, 40% were emails, 9% was social media, website was 4%. So leading the charge 
was the newsletter mailed to your house, an email right after that. And so I guess I, I just wanted to let everybody know what was going on with that. If you do want to sign up for the email, um, you know, get your email address in so we can send you stuff, we need that email address, and you can do that right now and give it to us by pressing 7, 7 on the keypad on your phone, 7, if you want to get on that email newsletter list. Okay, Eleanor's next. Eleanor, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Eleanor, go ahead with your question, please. Yes, it's Eleanor Herkert, Roger. I've been at the commission meetings and met you, and also at a meeting that was held for the parking on Diana Drive. I wondered what is happening on that and uh, uh, what's going to happen to our parking places. Well, you, you let me again have everybody understand Diana Drive is a parallel street to Hallandale Beach Boulevard on the south side. And it starts basically near the intercoastal and runs for a few blocks. Uh, uh, and eventually you can, by going through a variety of little streets, get yourself over to Publix. Once you're at Publix, that's it. It ends. Uh, our long-term goal is to continue uh, Diana Drive uh, and some of the other streets all the way over to uh, US-1 to track some of the traffic, if we could, off of uh, Hallandale Beach Boulevard. That's a long-range project, but it's a goal. Now, what's happening in the section that you're talking about is that over the years, uh, four different buildings have uh, used parking because they don't really have enough on their sites that is in the public right-of-way. And those four buildings, unfortunately, don't have sidewalks in front of them making it somewhat dangerous for uh, pedestrians. So through a lot of planning and meetings and talking back and forth, there have been many different solutions uh, looked at, but the current one does do away with 21 parking spaces uh, and replaces them with uh, sidewalks. But right across the street, uh, in some cases less than 50 feet away, we're adding 50 parking spaces in this redesign. So I have to be honest, there's going to be some folks who are unhappy about this. Uh, we've placed it on the agenda of the next uh, city commission meeting uh, for further uh, conversation. Uh, that meeting is February 21st. You can go on our website, uh, www.cohb.org. Uh, to verify the, the meeting, and we'll do it at a time certain so that if folks come, they don't have to stay all night. So, again, not making everybody happy, uh, but we're going to come up with some solutions to add spaces. And, again, I thank you for your call. I wish I could say in my career that I made everybody happy all the time, but that would not be the truth. <laughs> okay. With that, since you were uh, putting out – addresses and stuff like that, why don't we uh, tell the people that are listening on the call different ways to contact the city socially, for instance, Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. Go ahead, Roger. Okay. Let's start with email. Uh, um, it's social at cohb.org. Um, our website, www.cohb.org. Uh, Facebook is facebook.com backslash, I'm sorry, forward slash, again, facebook.com forward slash city of Hallandale Beach all together. Uh, and then if you're kind of old fashioned like me and you want to call, 954 457 1300. And during the day, somebody will answer the, uh, the call and uh, take down your message, and you will get a response. So I'll be repeating those a little bit later in the call. Let's do our second survey question, if we can, of the night. It goes like this. Aside from viewing city commission meetings, do you or your family watch the Hallandale Beach uh, cable access channel? And if you do, would you like to see more locally produced public information on this cable channel? If the answer is yes, press 1. If it's no, press 2. Again, the question. Aside from viewing city commission meetings, do you or your family watch the Hallandale Beach cable access channel? And if you do, would you like to see more locally produced public information on this cable channel? Press 1 for yes and 2 for no. 
We appreciate you voting on that. Meanwhile, while you're voting, yes or no, one or two, we're going to take Carol. Carol, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Carol, go ahead with your question, please. Hi. There was talk a couple years back and as recently as a year ago about the golf course property. There was going to be some additional uh, building of a hotel and some demolition work, and I haven't heard anything in the last uh, year or more. I wonder if you can bring us up to date on that property. Sure will. Uh, you're talking about the golf course that known as the Diplomat Golf Course. Uh, yes. And it is going to remain a golf course. Let me make that very clear. Uh, there uh, has been a uh, sale negotiated for that property to a new developer. I don't think it's closed yet, but it's uh, fairly imminent. Uh, having said that, uh, we have had conversation with the uh, potential buyer. They are very much aware of the need to scale down uh, some of that proposed development, which was approved by uh, previous commissions. Uh, and they seem very, very uh, concerned that what they do is an asset to the community. So I can't predict the final project, but I don't think it'll be as big as the one that was originally approved. And the building that was the spa there uh, and some hotel rooms uh, uh, is going to be greatly upgraded, and uh, I believe it is their intent to bring a world-class operator to that site. So it will be a, a great asset to our community and uh, a place where people who want to go to a spa can go, a place where guests can go, and it will bring visitors who will be going to our restaurants and and uh, bringing uh, new jobs to our community. So don't worry, the golf course will remain. Thanks for calling. Um, if anybody wants to ask a question, this will be my last ask of this. Please press zero, zero on the keypad on your phone. The people that have already got your question in, we'll get to you as fast as we can. Also, if you want to provide us your email address, press seven, seven on the keypad on your phone. Uh, the results of the second survey went no, the question went like this. Aside from viewing city commission meetings, do you or your family watch the Hallandale Beach cable access channel? And if you do, would you like more locally produced public information on this cable channel? Yes came across at 60%. That's pretty good. All right. But anyway, just wanted to tell you what was going on with that. Let's now take another question if we can. It's going to be from Brian. Brian, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Brian, please go ahead with your question. Uh, I just like to ask why why the city doesn't let you only get waste management. I live in a building, and they said when I called in the sanitation department, they says, "Oh, we need to get two days of service with the city." I don't feel that's fair because, anyways, the city's charging me on my waste management bill a franchise fee. Your thoughts, please. Well. Uh, again, a little context to that question. Uh, the city provides uh, solid waste collection, garbage collection, to all the single-family homes and to a large number of the multifamily buildings and the commercial sites. But we don't do every single building. There, there are some that are done by a number of waste collection private companies. And they do pay a franchise fee uh, to the city, just like uh, Florida Power and Light does and the phone companies and, and all the other utilities. So I uh, uh, would need to know more about which building this is. And if uh, uh, we'll call back to the, uh, to the caller and get that information probably tomorrow, and then we'll be able to give a very specific answer. Brian, I don't want you shooting your address off over the air, but uh, we do have your contact information, and we will reach back to you tomorrow one way or the other. If you want to reach out to us first, it's social at cohb.com, but expect to call back. Uh, Greg will tag it and get back to you one way or the other on that. So that's the best I can tell you right now. We, we don't want to get into the nitty-gritty over the air. Okay. And, uh, dot org. Dot org. Sorry. Cohb.org. Not .com, .org. 
uh, anyway, sorry about that. Claire's next. <clears throat> Claire, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Claire, go ahead with your question. Yes, hi. My question is, I have a disabled daughter and son. I'm very concerned about their transportation. I know it's contracted out to the county. I would like to see drivers that understand these kids when they get because they can't travel any other way. I would like to see the, the time-wise purpose, not 24 hours before, because if a kid's in a wheelchair and has to go for an emergency to a doctor the next day, why can't they call that day? I would also like to see a little bit more um, drivers being polite and nice and understanding these these kids. When I say kids, I'm talking 30s, 40s. I'm not talking about elderly. I'm talking about these kids that are strictly wheelchair-bound. And I'm very disappointed because if they tell you 7, they can show up at 9, and it's not fair. And okay. okay, clear, uh, clear. First of all, that's my granddaughter's name, so it's nice to hear from you. Uh, but this is a, a very specific question, and I believe, and I'll check this, that the transportation service for the handicapped comes from Broward County and not from us. But I will have somebody call you tomorrow uh, from our social service department and go over this issue and see what help we can give you to make sure that your kids get the kind of service that uh, that they deserve and that a caring government and a caring program should be given you. So we'll follow up. Thanks for letting us know. All right. Let's take another question if we can right away. And no, I think we should take the last survey question, make sure we get in with a large audience that we have on right now. Mobility is a huge issue in Hallandale Beach. How do you get around? Press 1 if you drive your own vehicle. Press 2 if you take the Broward County Transit. Or press 3, use the Hallandale Beach Free Shuttle Bus. Those are the three options. How do you get around? You drive your own vehicle, press 1. Press 2, Broward County Transit. Press 3, the Hallandale Beach Free Shuttle Bus. We appreciate you voting on all that. Meanwhile, let's take Patty. Patty, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Patty, go ahead with your question, please. Yeah, hi. I live on the northeast, and I've been living here for a while, and I don't I don't see any affordable housing on this side. Why? Patty, that's a great question. Uh, let me explain to people who are listening that affordable housing, or some people call it workforce housing, means uh, housing that that people who make certain income levels can afford to pay the rent or possibly even to buy the house. Uh, that is a great struggle throughout South Florida and throughout many areas of the country. And because we have so many restaurants and other type of service businesses, the salaries that people make here uh, in many, many cases just will never let them buy a house or even rent a place to live uh, that's a decent place. We did a survey of the city about two months ago and we found that there were 373 vacant properties that possibly could be either single-family affordable homes or uh, multifamily. That was kind of the baseline, that there are properties that could be bought. And we are developing a program now that has subsidies to the developers to bring down the construction costs or possibly uh, help people with down payments. And there's just a whole variety of ways to deal with this problem. Uh, another one is that uh, developers would pay an impact fee into a uh, fund that would help us to, uh, to do more of these. Uh, so the commission is committed. They gave us direction to move this program forward. And uh, uh, it doesn't get solved overnight, but we're very much aware of it, and we share your uh, uh, feeling about uh, there being a shortage because there is. We're not alone in Hallandale Beach. This is all over the South Florida area and in many parts of the country, but we're not ignoring that problem. So thanks for giving us focus on it and bringing it up, and uh, wish you good luck in your house search. And if we can be of help, uh, we'll get back to you and we'll give you some suggestions. Uh, 
because we actually have staff people who do help with these programs. So thanks. The people on this call, 88% take their own vehicle. Uh, 3% use Broward County Transit. 9% use the free shuttle bus. Just thought I'd pass that's that a, those are interesting results uh, that 88% drive their own vehicle. And we're working on something called a mobility plan. Mobility is, uh, to some people, traffic, traffic, traffic. And how do you deal with that? Uh, uh, and every town in South Florida is getting more and more tourists, uh, more and more buildings. Uh, uh, first thing, good news, uh, uh, we're ranked number first number one in a grant application that we have to what's called the Metropolitan Planning Organization uh, to better time through computerization our signals. Uh, uh, I drive Hallandale Beach every day. Uh, nothing is as frustrating as uh, getting a green light, then a red light, then a green light, then a red light. And a lot of that happens because all the cross traffic uh, uh, slows the thing down. If we do the computerization, and that's what we're working on, we will better coordinate these lights all the way on Hallandale Beach from the intercoastal to I-95 and on US-1 all the way from uh, uh, Hollywood down to uh, Aventura. So an exciting thing happening. Uh, we hope to get this funding in the next six months. Um, we're ranked number one of all the applications, and it just takes a little time. But it will make that better. And there's many, many other solutions that are going to be in this mobility plan. And it will be posted when it comes out, probably be ready in about two to three months. So not being ignored, being worked on, uh, and it is probably our highest priority. Well, thank you, sir. Mr. Timianko, I hope I said your name right. Welcome to the call. Go ahead with your question, please. What's coming up? I don't hear Is he him. there? Uh, he's not on yet. I don't know. It's kind of frozen in time for a second or something like that. Oh, Anyway, uh, while he's coming on and stuff like that, why don't we, if we can, first... Um, um, I'm going to try him again. Just a second. Here we go. Let's see if he pulls in now. There we go. Go ahead, Hello. sir. You're up. Sorry about that. That yeah, was my computer... Evening. I oh, think function. the gentleman just said something about the computerized lights. But my question is the intersection with um, Dixie and Hollandale. If you can avoid cars making a left to Dixie from Hollandale coming east or coming west to either way, I think the traffic will be a lot faster. The problem is that every time you drive on Hollandale, either from east or west, the other, Hollandale Boulevard and uh, east or west, I guess only one side has the traffic. The other side doesn't have the, the way to go. Am I making myself clear? I think the left turn is the problem. Uh, yes, you have. Uh, you're talking about uh, Hallandale Beach Boulevard, I think basically at the railroad tracks. Uh, um, that is one of the most complicated intersections, uh, not just in Hallandale, but uh, in South Florida. Because not only do you have two sides, one-way streets on the east and west of the railroad tracks, but Hallandale Beach is a six-lane uh, road, and there's left turns to be made. Uh, so the cycle, it's called, of letting all these movements happen uh, takes a long time. And if you've ever been there when a train comes through, it takes a long time uh, uh, and repeated cycles to get it back to normal. So I can't tell you that there's an instant solution to that. We're constantly working with Broward County, which controls all of the uh, uh, signals and the timing. And as you know, there were some bollards there, and those bollards were recently uh, removed, which I think has helped the eastbound traffic on Hallandale Boulevard immeasurably. Uh, but maybe and this will be discussed in the mobility plan, the only way to really solve that intersection is through an overpass. That's not a policy yet, something being discussed. Uh, so every intersection is difficult. Uh, I could go down the long list. 
uh, timing them all right to move the traffic is very, very difficult, but it's very high on our priorities, and I appreciate you uh, bringing it up. Uh, but rest assured, we are working on it. We have a bunch more questions, so let's plow through those. We've got, uh, we got Kathy up next. Kathy, welcome to our Telephone Town Hall meeting. Kathy, please go ahead. Hi. Yes, I live very close to the line of Hallandale Beach and Hallandale um, Beach. And I, too, I've been a long-term resident over 40 years, and I, too, live on Ocean Drive. So you and I have, I'm sure, similar um, awarenesses and challenges. My question uh, deals with the, the, the commission of Hallandale and the commission of Hollywood and possibly even um, the, the people from Dania. There's so much impacting all three, mostly the eastern part of all three cities, and I wonder how much um, communication and sharing and planning goes on on a regular basis in and among those three people that are making the decisions that impact the lives of those of us that are undergoing all this change. I think that's a great question. You know, we can't focus just on the west or the south or the north. Um, we have to focus on all parts of town. Uh, A1A is the road you're talking about, and uh, um, right at the uh, bridge over the uh, intercoastal, which is in uh, Palmdale Beach, if you're on the north side of that, you're in Hollywood, and then uh, three-quarters of a mile or a mile to the south, you're in Golden Beach. But uh, we are meeting uh, with four cities right now, Fort Lauderdale, uh, Dania, uh, Hollywood, and Hallandale Beach, uh, who've entered into a compact, I'll call it, uh, to try to bring the transit line that's going to be running from downtown Miami all the way to Aventura, to have that continued uh, all the way up to uh, Fort Lauderdale. And there's a lot of energy behind that. There's a lot of goodwill. And I really think that the ultimate solution to uh, uh, vehicular traffic is to convince people to take some other ways to get to work or to get around, whether it be our minibus or, believe it or not, walking or bike riding or um, – uh, using uh, transit if they're going a, a longer way. So we recognize what you're talking about. I drive it every day, and uh, uh, I think you bringing it up is uh, very appropriate, and your comment's been registered. Uh, these solutions are extraordinarily expensive, and there's so many units of government that are involved that you can't turn them around in a second. But the commission has made it very clear to uh, staff that they want solutions to uh, 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 our parking issues, our bus issues, our transportation issues in general. And by and large, they want new development to pay its fair share of those costs through impact fees. So we are on the case. Thanks for that comment. With that, and we've got a bunch more questions to take, let's take Holly next. Holly, welcome to our Telephone Town Hall meeting. Holly, please go ahead with your question. Yes. Uh, hi. Um, I live in on three islands, and we've had uh, power outages three days in a row for like a half an hour uh, at a time. And, and they say, oh, well, you know, it's going to be fixed. It's going to get fixed. But it, it just keeps going on. It's been three days in a row now, and it's scary when you think you might – you're food might go to waste and all that kind of stuff. So I was just wondering why uh, they said it's a uh, tra the Transformers, and so why can't they fix that? I don't understand. Well, I, I don't work for FP&L, <laughs> uh, but I do work for the, uh, the city commission and uh, everybody in this town, and we are in constant contact with uh, FP&L. I don't know if people realize it, but after uh, Hurricane Irma, the second city in Broward County that was 100% up and running was Hallandale Beach. And that happened for a variety of reasons. Uh, one is that we have a great relationship with them and that we worked with them. 
Um, the second one was that their base for this entire area happened to be at Gulfstream Park. So that was just luck. Uh, so they would work on our issues uh, first. But we'll follow up with you tomorrow because I want to find out, you know, where you live. And if you can keep a record of these outages for us, uh, we will uh, get on the case. So we'll call you. Thanks for letting us know. Greg, mark that record in the reports, if you would, please. I appreciate it. Um, and they'll come up overnight so we can get back. Uh, Ellen is next. Elena, welcome to our – Elena, I'm sorry. Elena, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Go ahead with your question, please. Okay. Can we hear your question? Elena, go ahead. I will read the question. Northwest okay. Near Cemetery program to help those – help with house repairs again the question northwest near cemetery that's where she is a program to help with house repairs was her question your thoughts okay just so folks know that the the city does uh, operate a cemetery uh it's done so for many many years and uh if you're interested in history uh that is a uh, a great place to go and look at some of those grave sites but the question here is what about house repairs uh there are many houses in uh, Hallandale Beach that uh, we look at and we have something called code compliance. Our goal is to help people to get them fixed. Our community redevelopment agency has a number of programs that range from painting your house to uh, helping it to become more uh, hurricane uh, resistant to major, major repairs. So. I will have our CRA people tomorrow call Elena and uh, get her in the uh, queue and get her the information she needs. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm looking for the next one. There we are. Anita, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Anita, please go ahead with our yes. your question. Yes, yes. My question is very short. I have a friend that lives on Southeast 2nd Street going west towards the uh, um, towards the railroad tracks. And there's this little patch of street right off US-1 on Southeast 2nd Street that's so full of holes, I cuss every time I go down that street. With all the beautifying they're doing on these other streets, why can't they fix that? I'm surprised to hear this. Uh, Steve Parkinson is our public works director, and... Uh, uh, I want to find out exactly where these holes are. We're out every day patching, and if there's some place that we're missing, uh, we'll get on this case. So uh, uh, we don't want your exact address, but tomorrow you'll get a call as well. And uh, uh, Or if you want, even tonight, you can use uh, my Palindale Beach uh, app to report it. So that's what you should do. It's my m y h beach use that take pictures even of where they are and this will help us to get our crews out there if you're not good at uh computers and uh and using your phone we're going to call you so uh i don't want you to get a flat tire and uh, we're on the case thanks for letting us know Robert, are you there? What happened to you? We might be having a little technical difficulty here, so everybody please be patient for a few seconds. Okay, I'll read this question. It comes from Robert uh, in the southwest section. The grass is about two feet high, and then he gives an address. Uh, code enforcement has been out there before. Can someone follow up with this? Got it on the case. Uh, we call it code compliance because we try to get voluntary compliance, but if it doesn't work, 
there's a long process we have to go to, uh, uh, and it goes all the way to leaning, or we can bring somebody in. So I have the address here, and tomorrow uh, I'll be talking to our code enforcement, uh, code compliance person, uh, and we will uh, uh, be on this case. But you can also use the myhbeach. I'm sorry, myhbeach app. Or again, you can call in. There's any number of ways that you can get to us so we can follow up on this one. Sounds great, City Manager. Thank you. Okay, good. You can hear me. <laughs> the technology yeah, is working. Clear. Okay, yeah, good. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty high, and um, uh, it's, well, it's, it's further complicated. Like, they must have had some problem there because the police – had four police cars here the night before, and the fire department was there in the lot. I'm not sure if there was an alligator in there or what it was, but but uh, but I'll, we have a lot I'll, of alligators in Hallandale Beach, and some of them have two legs, and some have four. <laughs> I'm sorry, right, I'm back. Well, thank I don't you know very that. much. Uh, we've yeah. got the uh, address here, and we'll be on this case. Uh, uh, every one of these code enforcement issues is very complicated, but thanks for letting us know. All right. Let's take Paul next. You can hear me loud and clear now, right? Yes. Okay. Let's take Paul next if we can. Paul, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Paul, go ahead with your question, please. Go ahead, Paul. You're up. Paul? Um, Increase of population. Let me repeat Paul's question. It's uh, uh, and he's from Golden Isles, and it is: What about the increase in population? How do you plan to handle the traffic that results? Uh, how do you plan on improving traffic patterns? Well, let's talk a little bit about finance for a minute. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of cities in Broward County can expand and hold down their tax rate because they can annex new land. We're landlocked. So ocean on one side, the interstate on the other, and two cities uh, to the north and south. So we don't have the ability just to expand and take in new property. So we have to find ways to raise our tax base um, and spread the expenses of the future over more residents and more businesses. And you have to do that very carefully because a taller building means more cars and more parking and and uh, more people living here and using our facilities. So the solution is what you call good development. Buildings that aren't too big for the site, buildings that relate well to the ones that are near them, uh, buildings that pay their fair share through impact fees uh, that gives us the money we need to uh, come up with solutions. And that's what I'm all about, I believe that's what our commission is all about, and we're working very hard with some existing projects that have been approved over the years that haven't been built yet to bring down their size. So we're knowledgeable about this. And I mentioned earlier in a response that we're doing a mobility plan that has a whole variety of solutions uh, that will go through public hearings and meetings and uh, uh, people will be able to respond to it. Some people like some of these things, some people don't. But it is foremost in our priorities to do something about the traffic issue. It is critical to improving the lifestyle of our community. Ann, welcome to our call. Ann, go ahead with your question, please. Hi. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I wonder about the King Tides. A few years ago, uh, the city of Allendale talked about getting some type of pumps for uh, the king tides, but so far, the last two years, I haven't heard any more about it. So I just want to know, do you have any plans to get the pumps for king tides, or will there be a higher tax for Allendale Beach to get the pumps? It's a great question. The uh, king tides, for, for those of you who haven't heard that phrase, happen twice a year, uh, and it has a lot to do with the moon and the tides. 
<clears throat> we also have sea level rise, which some people deny, but most people believe are happening. And then, of course, we have hurricanes and other storms that force water into our uh, <clears throat> our drainage systems. Uh, we're aware of them all. Uh, we have uh, what's called the stormwater utility that uh, people and businesses pay for uh, uh, adding to our drainage system. The Northeast Drainage Project was finished about a year ago on 14th Avenue. We're beautifying that area now so that it'll finish off that project. And we're uh, very soon uh, going to be, or we are out to bid on a Southwest drainage project. These projects come in at around $15 million each. So this is not a cheap thing to fix, but there's a plan. We start in the Northeast, we go to the Southwest and, uh, uh, and then we try to expand those. Now, folks who live along the canals know that in Hurricane Irma, uh, the water was just about to the top. Luckily, it didn't come at anybody's houses, but it certainly could. So uh, big pumps is basically the solution. I don't think anybody wants to raise our streets, uh, um, but, you know, that's an alternative. Uh, so we need to deal with this. It's a fact of life. Uh, I am not a denier of uh, the crisis that we're in. I'm the first one to say that we are in a crisis. And... We are working on something called a sustainability study that looks at not just drainage and flooding and tides, but it looks at ways that we can reduce what's called our carbon footprint. That means uh, how do we uh, have cleaner cars? How do we have uh, cleaner buildings? Uh, um, so a lot of stuff going on on this, and it's a great question. I'm glad that somebody out there is concerned about it. So thanks for that call. Let's take another Ann next, if we can. Ann, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Ann, please go ahead with your question. Hi. Um, I just moved in not too far from the O.B. Johnson Park, and when you're driving around, we're seeing, um, um, like, furniture or big piece of trash just in front of the houses or in front of multi-unit um, um, apartments. So how does this work exactly? Because I know they pick up the trash on my side every Thursday. So how does this work? Why are there those, those pieces just there and nothing is being done about them? Well, I, I wouldn't say nothing is being done. Uh, uh, we run trucks all the time uh, to uh, pick stuff up. Uh, but you're right. Some people are uh, just not good neighbors, and they will uh, dump stuff out of their pickups rather than paying to uh, to go to a, a proper landfill. But again, uh, use uh, my H Beach app. Uh, take pictures. Uh, uh, get a tracking number, and you will get a response. But you know, we want the cleanest city on this planet. Uh, uh, but to do that, we need help from our citizens to report stuff like this. And I, I don't want you to ever confront anybody, but if you could get a license plate number uh, and let us know what that is, I promise you we will follow up. But be careful. Don't confront anybody because you just never know what's going to happen. So a key concern, uh, we want a clean city that everybody can be proud of, and it's a constant effort to keep it that way. On Facebook, and we do post a lot of updates on Facebook. What's that address to Facebook so people can get to us on Facebook again, please, Roger? Uh, it's Facebook. I'm sorry, Facebook.com forward slash City of Hallandale Beach all together. Facebook.com forward slash City of Hallandale Beach all together. Let's take a couple more questions and try and fit them in in our hour if we can here. Eric, next. Eric, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Eric, please go ahead with your question. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Eric. Um, this, there's a property in the Walmart Shopping Center parking lot at Three Island Boulevard and Hallandale Boulevard that's been vacant for about 10 or 12 years. It's an old 
uh, one-story executive office building. Are there any plans for that property that you're aware of? Uh, the city doesn't have plans. I know the exact building you're talking about, you know, and Walmart is Walmart. They're a big chain. It, it is amazing to me that it stays empty because that's one of the busiest uh, per square foot uh, revenue Walmarts in, in the whole country. Uh, those of you who live near it know it's open 24 hours a day and it is busy. Um what I think is going to happen on the east side of Hallandale Beach Boulevard before you get to the bridge is that some of those older shopping centers that uh, are underutilized are soon going to come under uh, development uh, uh, to be a combination of housing and retail. Uh, I suspect that Walmart uh, will have uh, more business coming. Uh, uh, and that they'll do something with that building. But I don't know if there's some specific issue why it's tied up, but, you know, if there's a building, uh, I'd like to see it full. I'd like to see it productive and, uh, and and be worth more and more on the tax roll. But I don't have a specific answer on why that building is um, uh, vacant. Uh, uh, but I'll tell you what, I'll have one of my people make a call to uh, Walmart and, see if they actually own it. Sometimes those buildings are out parcels owned by somebody else. But you've piqued my interest to check into it, and I will. Thanks for calling. Oh, I bet one of the Cronkies owned the Walmart. <laughs> anyway, um, let's tell we're one of the Walmart folks. Maria's next. Maria, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Go ahead with your question. Uh, you hi, how are you? I'm wondering why there's no recycling of cans and plastic bottles. I live on three islands. We used to have a big bin by John Scalbo Park. My community, my complex doesn't uh, regulate this. They don't tell us we have to do it. They just have recycling for newspapers. Now, there's 242 units here. I'm on three islands. How is that regulated by Hallandale? Well, you, you raise a great point. Uh, uh, I, I wish that I had Sue Fassler here with me. She's my uh, environmental uh, coordinator, my sustainability person. We affectionately call her the green lady. And uh, um, there's a lot of older buildings, and I'm not familiar with your particular building, that weren't designed in the days of recycling. Uh, uh, so they don't have place for the machines that do the recycling or for the extra dumpsters that you need to separate out the recycling. So the boards don't enforce the policy because they don't have a, a solution that's uh, realistic. Um, but we're doing a lot of other stuff. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, there's much talk now about uh, banning plastic bags. Uh, uh, the city is looking at an ordinance to uh, uh, keep all of our styrofoam products that we use uh, to, to not allow those in parks anymore. So this sustainability question is very important. We have a coordinator. Uh, I gave you her name, but uh, we'll have somebody call you tomorrow and, and get your address and if it's possible to uh, talk to your building, uh, uh, we'll um, see if there isn't anything that can be done. So thanks for letting us know. Um, uh, maybe we need to have an ordinance on this uh, or a program that encourages buildings to, to get more environmentally sensitive. And I will tell you that uh, our sustainability coordinator is dedicated to this 24 by 7. Beatrice, welcome to our call. Beatrice, please go ahead with your question. Yes. I live in three islands in the private homes, and I was promised uh, nine years ago by Joy Cooper, the then mayor, um, that I have a, the dog park, which is the size of my closet, was going to be just decided to be how much it was used. And might I add, it is used 24-7, um, all around the clock. It is absolutely, completely 
uh, undesirable. I was wondering, in the new plans, with the whole new re-evaluation of the tennis court area, and I might add the bocce ball court, that I have done a two-year study by license plates of Canadians only. It is used basically two and a half months of the year. Is that going to be dissolved? And am I going to be promised a dog park worth anything? Or do I? Okay. Go ahead, Ron. Right, well, we, we heard your question. A uh, um, little bit of a speech, a little bit of a question, but that's okay. Uh, long story short, for those who aren't aware, uh, we are very close to completing the design of uh, new tennis courts, uh, bocce courts, uh, uh, and a much expanded and improved uh, dog park. So. We've listened to the citizen input on the design of this park. Uh, uh, the new park is just going to be gorgeous. It was part of a uh, general obligation bond issue that was voted on a few years ago by the uh, uh, people of Hallandale Beach and passed by a good solid majority. So my job has been to get these uh, parks designed, uh, have them be as efficient as possible, uh, get them out to bid and get them built. Uh, so this new park, uh, or let me say replacement park, is just going to be fantastic. Very quick on the, the notion of uh, who uses that park, uh, that has to do with overflow parking from a nearby building, and we have had the police out there uh, warning and ticketing the people who are using the parking lot that shouldn't, uh, and uh, we'll continue to do that till everybody learns that they need to park in their own buildings and uh, not use these public spaces. So thanks for your input on that park. It will be much better when it's rebuilt. Carla's next. Carla, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Carla, go ahead with your question, please. Hi. Good evening. It's very nice to have this call. Thank you so much for having it. Um, my question has to do with the uh, uh, swale that exists um, on the north side of Hallandale Beach Boulevard, right after the bridge, almost uh, right where Walmart is, but by the sidewalk, um, that is an area that is always full of water, trash. Uh, it's just very unsightly on a uh, uh, an area that is uh, that the sidewalk there is heavily trafficked by pedestrians, and it just seems like a dangerous area. I understood. Let, that let me uh, let me help you with this. Um, uh, um, we want to try to get as many people as possible uh, in the call. I know exactly where you're talking about. Uh, that little area belongs to the Florida Department of Transportation. It was kind of a leftover piece of land when they rebuilt the bridge. If you want to talk about cleaning the swamp, this is the swamp that needs to be cleaned. Uh, we are on their case, and I have great respect for our fellow uh, uh, employees at FDOT. Uh, they have promised us a design and get it out to bid so that it drains better. As soon as it drains better, we'll re-landscape it and take over the maintenance. So. We're fully aware of it, and we'll do something about it. So thanks again for uh, being observant and bringing it to our attention. Okay. Let's take Bernard next. Bernard, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Bernard, go ahead with your question, please. Hello. Hi, Bernard. Go ahead with your question. Hi. Please. My question is um, on north, the northwest um Third Street, coming across the railroad track. Um, um, I spoke to somebody from the city last year about they're going to be widening the road, or because um, uh, we have homes in the back of that Third Street, and because a lot of people have the right of way, we have to maintain. And they said it was going to be widening the road or putting parking on the side because. I think down from the water plant, they're going to be building, I don't know, condos or something. And it's the All right, Bernard, I, I've got you on this one. Uh, right now, 3rd Street is under construction from US-1 to the railroad tracks. Uh, um, 
like every construction project, I get complaints about how long it takes to get through the light and so forth. But when that's finished, it's going to be a beautiful road with two lanes and longer turn storage lanes and landscaping and uh, lighting and street furniture, and it's really going to be nice. The next phase that we want to do is to take it from the other side of the railroad tracks all the way out to the public works yard. We did apply for a grant to do that. Uh, it wasn't ranked as high as the one I mentioned earlier uh, about the signals, uh, but I hope to find the money to continue uh, that improvement uh, all the way out to um, uh, what is an undeveloped piece of land, but we do own it near the public works yard and go as far west with it as we can. So you're absolutely right. We need to continue that. And uh, it's on our radar screen, and we're trying to find the money to do it. So thanks for asking that question. It's a very important project to us. Sandra, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Please go ahead with your question, Sandra. Hi, yes. Good evening. Uh, my question is on permits and uh, inspections. I know that we have a great deal of building going on, which we're glad to see. But is this delaying um, permits? Um, and inspections in our city for just individuals or commercial? Well, Senator, another great question. Uh, we had partnered with a couple of uh, uh, private companies who were uh, helping us because uh, inspectors are uh, hard to find, plans reviewers are even harder to find. So the answer is we were caught up, but I will tell you, and Ever since the first of the year, the plans are just coming in in unbelievable quantities. So we are behind again, uh, have to be truthful about it, on reviewing uh, plans and specifications and issuing the permits. We're not behind on inspections, but we're going to bring in some more people. We'll do whatever we have to do because Folks need to know when they bring in a set of plans that there's a reasonable period of time for them to uh, get their permit. We try to set some priorities. You know, the folks who need a roof fix or a small project, we can do overnight practically. But sometimes a set of plans for a 20-story building weighs about 50 pounds, and that's a little harder to do. So you're right on. We are behind uh, on the front end. Uh, and we're working on it to find solutions. Thanks for bringing it up. We have time for two more questions. We're actually on overtime right now, we're trying to get as many as we can in tonight. Valerie's next. Valerie, welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. Valerie, please go ahead. Yes, good evening. First of all, I want to say that I'm enthusiastic about this idea of holding a town hall meeting over the phone on a telco. I think it's fantastic, and it's accessible to people who wouldn't be able other, any other way to to come to a meeting in person. Then I, I don't want to waste you any more time. I would like to say, as you mentioned before, there are only four accesses to the beach, Hollandale Beach, and they're very far away from each other, and it is difficult for the elderly to go from one to the other. And in between, there is a whole bunch of buildings, including the Diplomat Hotel and residents and residence homes that virtually block any possible access to the beach. Even though it would be possible to access the beach in between each building, they sort of like have security or whoever block it. And they also say that the beach in front of this building is private, is theirs. Now, is there any way, first of all, I would like to know if that's true. If beach, I always thought the beach was public property. And I want to know if it's possible that public property has become private. And also I would like to know if there is any way the city could um, uh, make uh, or stipulate some uh, accord with these uh, buildings so that to let citizens access the beach and uh, private well, let's, um, let's answer two questions. The first one, is the beach private? The answer is absolutely not. Uh, not even in Golden Beach, where there are these single-family homes. The beach is public. Nobody can block it uh, in terms of walking up and down on the beach. As a matter of fact, uh, over the next couple of years, there's a major beach renourishment project that will be coming where sand will be brought in from other parts of the state by truck, believe it or not. Uh, 
uh, to widen out the beach. Uh, we have hurricanes, we have storms, uh, we have tides, and you just have to constantly ensure that the beach is protected. So the beach is public and it will soon be wider. Now on the issue of beach access, you know, I wish that uh, people had thought more about this and that every one of the big buildings had some kind of walkway between it, but that's not going to happen. Uh, uh, we have these four beach access points. We also have two gorgeous parks, uh, North and South Beach. Um, uh, and uh, those are the access points, and frankly, those are the only access points we're going to have. Uh, so we need to make those four beautiful, welcoming, safe, uh, um, and, and even improve them for uh, handicap access with these special uh, wheelchairs with giant tires that kind of let folks who are in a wheelchair get over the dune and out to the beach. So that's our program. We're working on it. Uh, um, but uh, there just isn't going to be any more access through these private buildings. So. We're aware of your issue, uh, trying to make what we have better, but I just don't see a lot of expansion in the future. And Howard, you're up. Howard, go ahead with your question, if you would, please. Uh, yes, I don't mind, but pretty much uh, my question wasn't going to be about traffic, but you, after I uh, gave it, you answered uh, pretty much <laughs> what I was going to ask, so if I could... Uh, change directions a little bit uh, without upsetting anybody. Uh, the, I know coming forth the city, there has been a lot of discussion about outsourcing uh, essential services. Uh, I just wonder if you could uh, comment on, uh, on what, where that is and what, what the city's position is on uh, outsourcing essential services. You know, Howard, it's a great question. Uh, at the end of the day, the resources that we have are limited. Uh, nobody wants a tax increase. Uh, our costs keep going up. Uh, uh, so you have to find some solutions. Uh, I think last budget year, uh, the commission made it pretty clear that they didn't want to outsource uh, entire departments, although there was some conversation about some of our programs uh, uh, being outsourced more important to find a balance where you can use some private sector uh, folks when it's more efficient, like I mentioned earlier in the uh, uh, building permitting function, but uh, I don't see a mass uh, outsourcing, but my job is to find ways to do more with less. Uh, I always look at uh, outsourcing and uh, um, at the end of the day, it's policy that the commission makes. Uh, I can make recommendations, but they make the uh, uh, the decision. So I, I want to close uh, personally uh, uh, saying thank you to the more than a thousand people that were involved in this call during the uh, hour. Uh, I certainly uh, thank you for uh, staying on, listening, coming up with great questions. Uh, and I hope you all understand that we listened. We will follow up. Uh, this is a great city getting better every day and that, that uh, sometimes what you read uh, in various media or what people post on Facebook is uh, far more personal than truthful. But that's okay. That's public life today. So again, thank you. I couldn't be happier than to be the city manager, and I want to thank the people who helped to put this call together. But most importantly, the more than 600 dedicated employees who protect us every day, emergency medical, firefighters, police, uh, who are out there in the hurricane at 80 miles an hour fixing broken pipes, you know, at, at 80 miles an hour, and and uh, these folks do that uh, uh, during the toughest times, and they are there when we need them. Uh, and we live in a great place, and let's all work together to make it even better. Thanks. We're signing off. This is Roger Carlton, your city manager. And I also want to thank you all on behalf of the city commission, who uh, are dedicated as well and uh, making some great policy during some tough times. Thank you, times. Thank you. Times. 
Thank you. Thanks.